organized youth sports in America has lots of potential for our children to be physically active, establish relationships with their peers, and build self-confidence. But in its current state, it might also be one of the most dangerous epidemics in America. Many of us played youth sports growing up, myself included. But what today's kids face is totally different than what the adults in the room might remember. In the past 20 years, we've gone from a primarily recreational, multiple sport, multiple different seasons, to now a single sport, year-round club and elite athletic environment where these kids are treated more like young professional athletes versus just kids playing sports. And it's no wonder that every day we see more and more of these youth organizations and elite teams pop up, because this is a $5 billion per year industry. And they're luring parents and kids in with promises of winning and competition and making it to the next level. And they lure the kids in with shiny new uniforms and brand new playing fields. If little Johnny here, if little Johnny is going to have the typical American sports experience, he's going to start playing sports before he reaches kindergarten. But as opposed to what you and I may remember, by the time he reaches first grade, he's going to have to choose a primary sport. Because now we go from spring season to summer season to fall season Oh yeah, and if he wants to keep up with his peers, he might want to do an indoor winter season as well. And if he really wants to make that next level elite team, he might want to take some private lessons. And at each step of the way, there's more and more time commitment. There's more and more financial commitment. And little Johnny, he feels this. He experiences this. And the statistics show that by the time he reaches junior high, he's going to quit sports altogether. All that time and energy that you spent, and now the number one reason that he lists for why he quit is that that sport that he started off loving so much and wanting to do all the time, it no longer seems fun. And it doesn't matter what sport Johnny chooses. You can see this in lots of different sports. And it doesn't matter if it's just Johnny, it could be his little sister too. Because girl sports is just as common and just as popular now to get this year-round phenomenon. And they're burning out just as much. And the effects aren't just mental too, they're physical as well. As a sports medicine doctor, over the past 10 years we've seen a steady increase in the number of overuse injuries in children. Injuries we previously thought to be rare in the growing adaptable musculoskeletal system of children are now happening with increasing rates. We're seeing ligament tears and stress fractures that were previously rare, along with growth play injuries that are unique to children. I had this patient who came in with his parents. He's a 10-year-old baseball player. He's playing in three leagues at the same time two of which he's pitching in. And he comes in with elbow soreness, of course. And after doing the full evaluation and, you know, the x-rays and, and talking, I go back into the room to let them know that he's got an injury to one of the growth plates on his elbow, which sounds serious, but if he gives it time to rest, it'll heal up appropriately. And he and the family are upset but not because that he needs to take three months of off from pitching to allow it to heal. But they're upset. They thought it was something more serious. They actually expected him to have a ligament tear, a ligament tear that requires surgery, something we used to only reserve for our elite baseball players in the major leagues. But now we're seeing at younger and younger ages that this is an acceptable option because they know if he had that surgery, they would reconstruct that ligament stronger than it started, and this would allow him to pitch even more. 
what have we come to that this is even an option? And these are just the non-contact injuries. Whereas the biggest concern that we've seen as sports medicine providers is the increase in head injuries and concussions. And being aware of the long-term effects of these injuries has totally changed how we deal with them. I'm the head team physician for the Toledo Walleye. I take care of a minor league hockey team, and we see a lot of concussions, a lot. <laughs> so I know how devastating it can be in these adults, how devastating these concussions can be. And I've seen it shorten their careers. And it's unfortunate and it's sad when it happens. But these adults who make that choice, make their living that way, they're aware of those, those concerns before they get started. What's not acceptable is the trend we're seeing where these kids' careers are ending before they really got started. I had a 15-year-old patient come in. He saw me about nine months after his last concussion, and he's still having symptoms of his last concussion. He's having the physical symptoms that we see. He's having headaches on a daily basis. He experiences dizziness regularly. He's having the mental symptoms, where he's having trouble focusing and concentrating in school. And he's having emotional symptoms, daily anxiety that keeps him from sleeping. This was his fifth concussion. The first four all occurred prior to 12 years old, playing tackle football from the time he was little. And I go in to talk to him, and I let him know, because he's still having physical symptoms this far out, that his collision sport career is done. And he's upset. But mom and dad are more upset, and I'm on the same page with them, because I'm not sure he's going to get back to his baseline. I'm not sure he's going to get to the point where he can succeed in school like he had the potential to do. His career is over before it even got started. With the current environment of youth sports, putting our kids at risk for burnout and breakdown and potentially even brain damage, something has to change. We have to reverse the trend on this epidemic. I'll give you areas that we can work on and that we can change. If we want to prevent the burnout, we have to stop the madness. At least realize the ridiculousness of the current sports environment, where we're shoving so much sport and competition down these kids' throats that they're burnt out. It may have started innocently because we wanted them to play and have fun and compete, but when we keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them to the point where it's no longer fun, that has to stop. At least realize the odds. Most parents believe that their youth sports athlete is going to make it to the next level, is going to get that college scholarship. And if he doesn't put in the time now, he's not going to make it. But statistics will show that only 1% to 2% of high school athletes, if they make it that far, will go on to play in college and have a scholarship. And as parents, if we're putting all our eggs in one basket, that little Johnny's going to be our next basketball star, he only grows up to be five foot two. you may want to have a backup plan. If we changed our sports environment to where we encouraged different skill sets at different levels, where we got away from competition and winning to skill and safety, we could make a big difference. Number two, if we want to prevent the breakdown, we have to set limits. Set limits on the amount of hours they're able to participate per week. Set limits on the amount of these weekend tournaments and competitions where kids are playing back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games 
with very little rest time in between. Kids' bodies aren't designed to heal that quickly. They can heal, but not that quickly. And take some time off. If you get to the level where you're old enough to kind of choose that you want to go more year-round, at least take one season off. Let those repetitive stresses get a break. You can do whatever you else you want during that season, but take one season off. But if we really want to make a difference, if we really want to make a difference in where this epidemic is going, we have to do something about the concussions. Not only is it not right to kind of think of these kids as little adults, as my little version of my adult hockey players when we're dealing with concussions, it's not fair. These young brains aren't designed to, st to stand those contact and collision injuries. They're designed differently. A child's brain has less myelin. Myelin is a protective coating that surrounds the nerves of the brain. Having less myelin insulate those, insulates those nerves less, making them more prone to injury when a head injury does occur. Kids also have weaker neck muscles, so they can't brace themselves from injury. And kids are also top-heavy. Their heads make up a larger distribution of their weight. So they're already leaning in, so their head is going to make contact first. And you can try to teach any technique that you want, but these are just how kids are designed. If we really want to make a difference, we have to realize this. And if you look at the science behind it, at what age kids are able to stand some of those injuries, it's about age 14. If we held off on our collision sports until age 14, we would make a huge difference. I'm not saying kids can't play football. They just shouldn't play tackle football. I'm not saying that kids can't play hockey or lacrosse. They shouldn't check it until age 14. The science is overwhelming. And now we're seeing the data behind it. If my patient had waited, he'd still be playing. And yes, concussions can occur from different areas of life. They can occur on the playground. They can occur, occur from falling off a bike. And I don't want to wrap kid, kids in a bubble. Those are going to happen. But when we're intentionally colliding kids, that doesn't make any sense. And if this was my patient's second or third concussion because of some playground accidents, he'd still be playing. And concussions don't just occur in collision sports. They occur in other sports as well. Anytime there's a risk of athletes colliding with each other, or a piece of equipment, or even the ground, there's a risk. There are some things in those other sports that we can do to help as well. Soccer, one of the most popular sports of, in America, has one of the highest concussion rates, all because of a single play, hitting the ball. Kids' heads and necks aren't designed to resist the ball. And oftentimes when they're going up for the ball, they're just hitting the other player at the same time. If we took heading the ball out of soccer to the point where it's, it's a penalty, the other team gets the ball at that point, if we discouraged it through our rule changes, we would take soccer, one of the most popular sports, and make it one of the safest. And technology. Technology can be used as well. We all carry gyroscopes and accelerometers in our pocket, this same technology can be used on the protective equipment of children. So we can know what kind of forces cause concussion at the part where it matters most to them. And if we're alerted to somebody that experienced those forces, whether or not they have those initial signs of concussion, I'm going to hold those out. I'm going to make sure that we're erring on the side of caution. 
And with computer technology, we can do baseline neurocognitive testing online, which detects some of the subtler changes as far as the brain is concerned. Things that used to be able to fool us as doctors, where, yeah, they look okay, they should be able to go back. Their brain still hasn't recovered yet. These online testing can help. Every season of every sport should start with the baseline test. That way, when the, if they do sustain that injury, whether it's colliding with another player or the ground or a piece of equipment, we can make sure they're all the way healed. We can make sure they avoid having a second injury on an already injured brain. I love youth sports. I love the potential of all the good things that can come from youth sports. I love that our kids can be active. I love that they can have positive relationships interacting with their peers. And I love the fact that they could grow to love a game. But I also know that the current sports environment not only puts these things at risk, but the health and safety of our children at risk. Things need to change. They have to change. And if we made those changes and continue to keep these things in mind, we can improve the human experience for our children. Thank you.